morning. It's Tuesday, November 24th. And as you can see, I'm all dressed to talk about Sidney Powell, the very conservative lawyer, the Southern Bell, who offered up the wildest conspiracy theories that anybody on Giuliani's inept election fraud team ever spoke. Sidney Powell proceeded to incorrectly suggest that a server hosting evidence of voting irregularities was located in Germany, and that the software that was used to run the election in Georgia and in other states was created at the direction of the late Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, and that votes for Trump had probably been switched in favor of president-elect Biden. Now, Hugo Chavez died in 2013, so you got a Looney Tune running around pretending to be a lawyer. But I don't want to say any more about her and Giuliani's poorly constructed team and Trump's crazy ideas that he could overthrow the election. I want to tell you about the good news, and the good news is really good news. Emily Murphy, the GSA administrator who has been holding up the transition has finally conceded that Donald Trump has lost the election. And she didn't say so in so many words, but she had been defending her position because she claimed she had to be loyal to the people that employed her. She didn't have to be loyal to the country and do her job correctly. She had to be loyal to the people that employed. She also claimed that her decision was not made out of fear or favoritism. She said she strongly believed that the statute requires that the GSA administrator ascertain, not impose, the apparent president-elect. So I guess she ascertained that Joe Biden was the president. But she doesn't have to be loyal anymore. And so she wrote a letter. And let me tell you what the letter said. She opens the letter, Dear Mr. Biden. Now, I don't know whether you're supposed to say Dear President-elect Biden or whether you should say Dear Sir. Uh, Anyhow, the letter is really addressed to the Honorable Joseph R. Biden, Jr., So I guess dear Mr. Biden is okay. And then she goes on to say, as the administrator of the U.S. General Services Administration, I have the ability under the Presidential Transition Act of 1963, as amended, to make certain post-election resources and services available to assist in the event of a presidential transition. So there it is, in one long sentence, the words that Biden and his team have been waiting for. They are now going to be able to get the resources, the space, the money that they need to exercise a swift and professional transition. It means that they can meet with all the people, the security people, the medical people, the military, whomever they need in order to get this country up and running on January 21st. So this is a big burden that has been lifted off the shoulders of Biden. Now, he wasn't lying around sleeping, waiting for this to happen. He has assembled a team a team of people that he has worked with for many, many years. This is very different from the team that President Trump assembled. President Trump took people who had donated money to him, like DeVos and DeJoy. He took people who were not experienced in the government. 
He took people who he could boss around, and he fired them if they stepped out of line. But Biden's team is a group of governmental professionals. Janet Yellen, who will be who will replace Mnuchin, Mnuchin as the Treasury Secretary. Antony Blinken, who has much experience in matters of state, will be the Secretary of State. And he and Biden have worked together for 20 years, 20 plus years. Avril Haines will be the Director of National Intelligence. And if she's confirmed, she will be the first woman that ever led the intelligence community. And she has been the first woman to hold several other posts, like Deputy Director of the CIA and Deputy National Security Advisor. So I have confidence that this is a woman that can do the job. He selected Alejandro Mayorkas, who was the Deputy Secretary in the Department of Homeland Security to be the first Latino and the first immigrant nominated as the DHS secretary. So he has a lot of experience. This is a man of experience, and this is a man who understands what it means to come from another country and be a success in the United States. So I am very confident. I am very comfortable with his selections. He is not taking anybody who hasn't done government service before. And he hasn't taken anybody that he doesn't know. And that's very important. And I'm sure that the people he has taken are not lackeys and not toadies, and they will not do his bidding. These people appear to be people of conviction. They won't necessarily agree with everything that Biden wants to do. They will stand up and speak when they have to speak. If they disagree, they will disagree. And it won't cost them their jobs. And these people will work hard for us. That's the good news. And we can move forward. And now January 20th doesn't look as bad as it did a couple of days ago. So having said that, I will say goodbye and see you in the morning. Bye.